Phew, damn. This is a Samsung Galaxy A33. Is it a worthy upgrade from the A32? Yes, it is. Should you go out right now and get this smartphone? Well, even though this is a great smartphone and has even the same processor as the Galaxy A53, I think there's a problem with the smartphone. So just like the A53, the A33 this year comes out of the box with just the smartphone itself, a USB-C to C cable connector, same ejector tool, the paperwork, and that's it. So you do not get any TPU case, nor a charger out of the box, and that's really, really crazy. One unique thing about this year's A-Series lineup would be the design. You'd barely tell the smartphones are parts from this wear, except you flip them to the front, or if you get different colors. While the top side has a secondary mic, a hybrid type nano SIM slot, and that's one SIM and memory expansion slot, or just two SIMs, the bottom side of the smartphone gives you a mouthpiece opening, USB-C port, and a downfiring speaker. So no headphone jack on this mid-range device no more, and that's kind of crazy. The fingerprint scanner from here is an in-display type, so not the fastest or most accurate when compared to the physical side-mounted options out there. But this here is a tad bit better than what we got from the A32 from last year. The front side of this smartphone has the teardrop notch, which does feel dated in 2022 if you ask me. But you get a Gorilla Glass 5 protection for this display. Speaking of protections, this smartphone here has an IP67 rating, which can survive up to 1 meter in water for 30 minutes, hence that flex at the intro. Yeah. This time we get a Dolby Atmos audio in a stereo speaker configuration, the down firing and the other at the earpiece position. And this is actually an upgrade from the mono speaker we got from the predecessor as far as audio. And I really like the clean, punchy and generally enjoyable sound from this chassis. Onto the display, you get a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED panel, 1080p Full HD Plus resolution and a 90Hz refresh rate. This panel is actually vibrant, although I do not really trust the white balance as it is a little warmer than should be. And that's even when you try to tweak the display's temperature from its settings from within the settings of this phone. Now for the size, this 6.4 inch size is about my preferred screen size. I don't know about you, what's your ideal size? Let me know in the comments. And while you're at that, a sub to this channel wouldn't hurt, would it? Hit on that subscribe button. So, we still retain the Infinity U display just like the A32 on the smartphone, the Galaxy A33. First off, on here you get a 6GB of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. The Exynos 1280 processor is what you get on here, which is the same as you would find on the Samsung Galaxy A53, making the smartphone the same in terms of performance as that smartphone. Generally, performance on here is snappy, apps load up quickly, and multitasking is actually a breeze on here. The processor in this smartphone is supposed to be quite powerful and efficient while gaming, right? But one problem I've come to see right here is that most games I've played on the smartphone are not able to get the best graphic performance with this chipset. And that's most likely because they weren't built with that chip optimization in mind. So developers would have to throw out updates that would take advantage of this chipset to give you this better graphic experience with the Galaxy A33. Hence, at the time of this video, PUBG still plays at HD graphics and high frame rates. Not the best for the price range, but gaming is sure enjoyable with the A33. Android 12 and One UI 4.1 is what you get on here. So Samsung's One UI is now about the best Android skin I have come to love so far. You know, the user experience has been one of the major things they have come to pay attention to. The RAM Plus feature is also another feature that helps you swap your internal memory for RAM when the need arises. So with the Galaxy A33, you can boost your RAM from 6 gigs to an additional 6 gigs, making it 12 gigs of RAM when you want to use that kind of stuff. But when you come over to updates, you should expect up to four years updates as promised by Samsung. And that's one of the major selling points for the new A-Series this year. Now let's talk about one of the major reasons you are here, the cameras. 48 megapixel main sensor, 8 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel depth sensors make up this rare quad camera module. While a 30 megapixel sensor sits at the front of this notch with the smartphone. One good thing Samsung has really tried to nail more than its competitors is getting the ultra-wide photos to look reasonably similar to the main sensor. I would admit that this is not the best thing here, but it definitely does fit in. Photos captured with the main camera have good details, are really reliable in terms of understanding what's being captured, and are quite vibrant for what the smartphone does offer. I actually do love the selfies from the smartphone. Good dynamic range, great photos, and vibrant-looking images are what you should expect. Videos can be recorded at 4K 30fps, 
but with optical image stabilization only available at 1080p. Well, this is a welcome upgrade since there wasn't no 4K recording in the Samsung Galaxy A32. A day of use is actually guaranteed with a 5000mAh battery on the smartphone. So about 7 hours screen on time, and this is clearly because you have a 5nm efficient processor coupled with an AMOLED display. You can take advantage of the 25W fast charging feature to juice up this guy in about 70 minutes, but then no charger comes within the box and you'd have to go get that yourself for an additional price. So you can get the smartphone for about $350 to $370 or $185,000 as I got mine here which is 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. I honestly do think that this is actually better value for money than say the Galaxy A53 and hear me out. They share the same processor, the same design and you get a great display and all except for the slightly better cameras on that smartphone. So what's my major gripe with the Galaxy A33? For a mid-range smartphone, I don't really see the reason why it doesn't come out of the box with a charger and there's no headphone jack on this mid-range device. What's up Samsung? This might not seem to be issues for a lot of people but having to pay an extra $15 to $20 for a 25 watt charger just adds up to the cost of this smartphone. But this is a really competitive device for its price range and I can actually easily recommend it. So should I compare the Galaxy A33 with the Redmi Note 11 Pro? Chloe that day.